This is Literature Hub 247, a free online literature class. If you want to be part of this class, just click on the subscribe button and the bell icon there. That will give you access to all our videos. And whenever any video is produced, you are going to be notified. This class is on an African play titled Once Upon an Elephant. Once Upon an Elephant is written by Bosede Ademilua Afolayan. Earlier on this channel, we discussed the plot summary of the play as well as all the hearts, that is, Acts 1 to 14. We've discussed all the hearts. We've also identified the themes as well as the characters that we have in the play. So, if you need the links to all those videos, you can just make your request through the comment box. Just write in the comment box that I should send you the link to the, either the plot summary or the hearts, the themes, and some other areas in the text that we have discussed earlier. This class is about the dramatic techniques that are used in the play. What do we mean by dramatic techniques? There are the different ways, the different techniques, the different methods the author has used in passing across the narrative to the reader. So let's identify some of the techniques used in the play by the author. The first one is flashbacks. There is the use of flashbacks in the play. Some past events are related to the readers through the use of flashbacks. I think you don't, you don't need to define what's mean by flashback. You don't not to waste uh, our time as a little student. You're supposed to have known what flashbacks is. The readers know how Olani Yono came about bearing Ajanaku through the use of flashbacks. Olani Yono himself narrated this on the day of his coronation as the king. That is, we are able to know about that through the use of flashback. He says, His father saw the greatness in him when he was a child, the way he struggled to suck his mother's breast, how he fought and be the little children of his age. His father then called him a Janaku. The leaders are able to know how King Akinjobi died through the use of flashbacks. King Ajanaku narrates this when the people of Oguno village run to him for help to rescue them from their attackers. One of the men refers to King Akinjobi as a very good and kind friend of his. Ajanaku tries to explain the deplorable condition the king was in. That is, by the time the king uh, was dying, the condition he was. Despite being kind to the people before he died, nobody came to his aid despite being kind to them. That is what uh, Ajanaku is trying to bring out when the man referred to him as a very kind uh, man. The name of Yagba is also known through flashbacks. Yagba refused this. When Sudbaon runs to her for help, she reminded him how he used his treachery to change her name from Omo Fadike Adoni to Yagba. All to cover up his atrocities. The event that culminated in the death of King Akinjobi are also related to the leaders through flashbacks. Yagba narrates how Suruban was having affairs with Adebisi, King Akinjobi's second wife. This eventually results in the king developing a strange ailment that kills him. Another one is how Yagba was sent out of the palace. This is also revealed through flashbacks. For Surubao to cover up his atrocities, falsely accused Yagba of adultery. Demoke testified to it and the woman was sent out of the palace. Another one is foreshadowing. Foreshadowing. The dream the solar has about their wedding ceremony where everybody is happy, whining and dining. This foreshadows something. I shall see here now. 
Other only chant is Jala to the admiration of the people, but when it is her turn to chant her own Ekun Yawo, she loses her voice. That is the dream being narrated by Desola. Other only is then furious and threatens to kill her if she does not sing. This foreshadows the crisis that marks their wedding later in the play. Desola is raped by Ajanaku when the wedding preparation is in top gear. Another instance of foreshadowing is the statement made when Ajanaku relates when he was named Ajanaku. Let's quote him. But what exactly does an elephant do to creepers and thorns and bushes and thickets and a whole forest of trees standing in its way? He tramples them, quote unquote. This foreshadows his actions when crowned as the king. He tramples on other people's rights and becomes autocratic. So that is foreshadowing. That is, it tells us what to be expected later in the play. Another one is in Act 6, when Yagba tells Ajanaku that ancestors don't forget wrongs and never overlook rights. She says, what Ajanaku took from her and others will be returned at the appropriate time. This foreshadows the tragic end of Ajanaku later in the play. We also have the use of irony. There are different types of irony in literature, and some of them are used in this play. The first one is dramatic irony, where the audience knows more than the character. Ajanaku believes that he is the father of the child in Omayeni's womb, but the audience knows that the baby is Delanese. There is also the use of situational irony. True Serubawan, his evil deeds come back to him. His daughter is raped by Ajanaku and he also commits suicide eventually. You know, Adibe, he knew by the time he was plotting it with uh, uh, Ajanaku, he wouldn't have embarked on it. So everything now comes back to him. His daughter is raped by Ajanaku and he also commits suicide at the end. We also have rhetorical questions. This is an expression presented in the form of a question. This is used in Act 1. When Serubayon tries to explain what he has done to save the life of King Akinjobi as his mercy man. Rhetorical questions are also used when Yagba refuses how Serubayon had affairs with ADBC in her room. She expresses her determination not to expose them and not to say anything provided they stop it. In rhetorical questions. All these are presented in uh, rhetorical questions. It's, she's expressing it, but they are put in form of a uh, question. We have the use of symbolism. Ajanaku symbolizes the sit tight autocratic leaders in Africa. You know, by the time we were identifying the, uh, we were identifying the theme, we did identify a theme of uh, autocracy. And Ajanaku, his character, make him to be a symbol of uh, autocracy here. So he symbolizes the sit tight autocratic leaders in Africa. He is crowned as its king in a corrupt manner and forces his unpopular policies on the people, as done by some African leaders. Iyagba is a symbol of the citizens that are ready to tell the truth, no matter how they are persecuted in the society. She is called a mad woman lies against her and is sent out of the palace, but, but she remains undeterred. Other Jemini is another character that symbolizes the fearless citizens who are ready to confront this autocratic leader and tell them the truth. Other Jemini always criticizes Ajanaku whenever it takes any wrong step. We also have the use of allusion. The song Yagba always sings, when in the presence of Ajanaku is an allusion from Yoruba folk text, which is composed as a poem by Adeboye Babalola. This song, that song. The song is from the Yoruba oral narratives about an elephant and a tortoise. Yagba sang the song to predict the downfall of Ajanaku, you know. In Yoruba land, tortoise is a trickster animal. So that narrative is about uh, tortoise 
learning playing tricks on a on an elephant i'm still going to narrate that in that story so that we understand the the play very well that's another that's another video yeah the, the expecting that um some other your best expressions that are using the play i'm going to uh, make a video on that and uh, give the minutes let's also consider the language the author makes use of simple english vocabulary in writing the play she also uses Yoruba vocabulary and proverbs this becomes imperative because this, she delves into some cultural heritage of the Yoruba, like marriage rituals rites and festivals this fulfills one of the functions of literature that is depicting the culture of the author you know that's one of the functions of literature that is depicting culture of the of the author that is the non yorubas will know at least at least a little bit about the cultures of the of the uh, the yorubas so we have done justice to once upon an elephant written by Bose de ademilua afolaya as i said earlier we have discussed the plus summary all the hacks that is at 1 to 14 the themes the characters and these are the dramatic uh, techniques used in the play so we have just done justice to the play so if you have any question on this video or any other video or on literature generally please don't hesitate to send your message through the message box and if you have any comments to make please let's send it through the message box also and uh, like this video share it with your friend share it on social media platform you are free to do that invite your friends to join us and as we are doing that god bless you we have a lot of gain on this uh, platform as we are going to discuss all the recommended texts all the poems are already discussed here so if you need the links to all those videos just send your message through the message box and uh, it will be sent to you thank you and god bless